Hi, this is Jamie East and I'm in the Bodybuilding.com kitchen today and I'm excited to show you one of my favorite healthy desserts. This is Orange Almond Biscotti. Let's see. I'm going to need two bowls. We've got a large bowl and a smaller bowl. And we've got all our ingredients here. I'm using oat flour. Oat flour is essentially just ground up oatmeal. You can get it at um, any, any grocery store pretty much because now they have the little healthy section. Um, but if you need to, you, you can also grind your own oatmeal in a blender. Um, just know that you usually can't get it quite as fine as this, so you might need a little bit more. This is two cups here. You might need more like two, two and a third or two and a half even. So dump that in the bowl. Next dry ingredient that we need is our baking powder. Baking powder is the leavening. You've got baking soda, baking powder. Um, usually when you use something like baking powder, it's, uh, it keeps it, like baking soda, think cake. Baking powder, think a little more dense. So that's what we're using is baking powder. So we'll dump that in. We've got, um, I think that was a teaspoon of baking powder. We've got a fourth of a teaspoon of salt. You normally need salt because it's going to help your um, leavening ingredient, like your baking powder, um, react. So, then we've got to get our whisk. These are our dry ingredients, pretty basic. Okay, and we'll set that to the side. And now we've got our wet ingredients. We're going to need four egg whites. Kind of hard to break it on this little bowl. And you're going to separate the yolk from the whites. And you can throw that away or save it if you want to. Throw that away. Number two. Number three. Don't get any shell in there, that's pretty important. And if you ever happen to drop the yolk in, like this, pretty easy. You can actually fish it out with the same one and pretty much get all of the yolk out. If you have a little stray here, oops, you can use the other side. Pretty simple. Let's get the last one. By the way, make sure you preheat your oven to 350, which we've already done, so we're ready to go. Rinse my hands off. Then we're going to use our cup of Splenda. Now Splenda is the sweetener that I chose, but you can you can choose any sweetener of your choice. Um, I like the no calorie stuff, and some people only use the natural sweeteners, and that works too. So just whatever you would like. I'm going to mix that up. It gets a little frothy. Okay, once that's incorporated, we're going to add our extracts, which is what gives the biscotti cookies their flavor. So we've got almond extract here. Almond is pretty strong, so we're actually going to end up putting a little more orange than we will the almond. But So for this one, we're going to do about a half a tablespoon of the almond. And this is pure almond. There's um, artificial or imitation. Um, you can use those, those will work, but I personally prefer the pure because I think they have sort of a little bit of an alcohol kind of smell and flavor. And then we've got our orange extract. And for the orange, because we really want to, that's really the main flavor of the cookie, we're going to do a full tablespoon. these together. It's starting to smell really good. Okay, once you have that incorporated, we're going to add our odd ingredient, which is our baby food. This is applesauce. And the reason I like to use applesauce is it really, um, it actually replaces the butter and oil in, in your ingredients. You can use lots of different types of baby food to do the same thing. Um, there's all kinds of fruit versions. 
uh, like a berry would enhance chocolate. Um, apples are good for anything that's, you know, spice or actually like in this one, because of the orange and the almond, it sort of just disappears. You don't really taste any apple at all. So, and then that's about it. Got it, got it all cleaned out. And by the way, there is sugar in the baby food, the applesauce, but um, it's about, I think it's about 11 grams in that one. You want to look for one that's, you know, as low sugar as possible, but it makes so many cookies that really it's negligible the amount of sugar that ends up in this. So, we've got that incorporated. And so that's all of our ingredients. Now we're going to add our wet ingredients to our dry ingredients. So and get my little nifty spatula here. It helps me scrape the sides. And you can use a whisk to mix this all together. Sometimes it gets a little bit thick, or you can just keep using the spatula that you have. We'll try the spatula. This is supposed to be kind of thick. If you've never made biscotti before, um, you actually bake it a few times. Like this one, we're gonna put it in the oven and we'll end up baking it for about 20 minutes. And then uh, when you take it out, you're gonna cut it and actually bake it again. You can continue to bake it until it's as hard as you want. So you can see it's starting to really thicken up, which is what we want. Get all the good stuff off the sides. It's more doughy than like a cake batter or anything. Okay, so we've about got that mixed. It smells really good. Um, another option for this is when you've got your dry ingredients, you might want to actually add uh, protein, which I'll do sometimes just to, you know, add, add a few macros to it that are good for me, that I need anyway. So we've got that all incorporated. And you're going to get an aluminum baking sheet. The reason you need aluminum is we really want them to get brown. If you use anything like glass or anything like that, it really doesn't get um, as crispy as you want. So we'll do a light spray, just so it doesn't stick. Non-stick spray. I always use the butter flavor just because it's um, better for baking. It won't, the taste won't really interfere with the, the bake good. Let's see, it looks like I have a little extra dry stuff on the bottom there. So I'm gonna dump this. A little sticky. Dump it on and then you're gonna actually sort of just spread it out. You can use your hands too, which is often what I do. I think I'm gonna do it, so I'm gonna push that off. And you just sort of wanna make it, uh, push it around until it ends up about, maybe about an inch and a half thickness and you actually are looking to sort of make a rectangle out of it. That's about good enough, probably. It doesn't have to be perfect and pretty. It'll taste the same. So, all right. And it's ready for the oven. You wanna make sure that your oven um, is, or the rack is about in the middle. Make sure it's not too close to the heating element which is on the bottom. And we'll set the timer for about 20 minutes. And we're good to go. So 20 minutes later, we'll be able to cut them and bake them again. Okay, turn our timer off. Let's see. It's been in the oven about 20 minutes. Let's see what we have. Looks just slightly brown, which is what we want. Just real light on the edges. It's about the same as when we first put it in. So now we just need to set it aside for a little while, probably about 10 or 15 minutes, let it cool enough so that we can cut it into our biscotti cookies and put it back in the oven for about 15 more minutes. All right. Now our, um, our cookies are about cold, at least the first step. So it looks almost like it's not even done yet, but that's really because it's not. Um, but it should at this point be pretty easy to transfer from here to a cutting board. So we're gonna move it over. 
And you want to get um, a knife. This is a good serrated knife. It doesn't have to be serrated. You can use a regular butcher's knife, just whatever. But the goal is to make these as uniform in size as we can. So the first thing I like to do is cut it straight down the middle. So this one's perfect length, actually. So and if you can see, you know, you've got kind of the beginning of your cookie in there. So I'm going to push it back together. And I'm going to start making my slices. And you can probably, I like to do the very first one really, really close to the edge. And these are my eat them right now cookies. Okay. They're not really done. And they're too small to really make an actual cookie out of. So that's my excuse. So that's the first one. Now we want to make like about 13 cookies, or about 13 slices. And you can do um, as thin or as thick as you want to. That's totally up to you. Okay, and again, we've got the ends that you get to snack on now, so I'll put those to the side. Okay, now what we want to do is we actually want to put them back on our baking sheet. Um, you can spray it, or actually you don't even need to spray it. They don't really stick, so we're just not even going to spray it. But now the cookies will look like this. So we're gonna just place them all on their side. Get them all spread out. They're a little bit crumbly at this point, but when we're done with them, they won't be. So our oven at this point is still on 350 degrees because we're gonna put them back in, let them continue to bake uh, 15, 20 minutes, however long. And then when we take them out, it's up to you at that point if you want to continue baking them to make them a little bit crispier or if you're done at that point. I like mine pretty hard because I like to have them with my coffee, so um, I will usually put them in uh, several times actually. So they're ready to go. We'll set it for 15 minutes. Are done. Let's see. Close this up. All right. They look they look brown, pretty brown on both sides. You can actually do it one more time if you want. If you like your cookies even harder, but um, one cookie will is only about like 30, 31 calories. Um, it's got less than a gram of fat in there. Um, you've got four carbs and about a gram and a half of protein. Thanks for joining me in the kitchen. Please check back often at bodybuilding.com for future recipes.